In today's video, we're going to look at whether you should always temper your meat before cooking it. The conventional wisdom is that this results in more evenly cooked meats and seafood. But how do you temper meat? And does it really make a difference? And if so, how long should you temper it for? Won't too much make for ill-tempered meat, or rather, an ill-tempered stomach later on? So many questions. Let's start answering them. But first, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Chris Young, and I'm the co-author of Modernist Cuisine and the creator of the Combustion Predictive Thermometer. If you like videos like this one that explore the hows and whys of cooking, I'd really appreciate it if you'd click that like button and hit subscribe. Subscribers like you help me to keep producing videos like this one. So, how do you temper meat? Simple. You pull it from the fridge and let it start warming up to room temperature well before you cook it. In a restaurant, when an order for a steak comes in, you typically pull it out of the fridge, season it with plenty of salt and pepper, and then let it sit out before it's actually time to cook it. Partly this is a workflow management kind of thing, but most chefs I know believe that steaks, chops, chicken breasts, whatever, end up cooking more evenly than if you forget to pull it out and have to go straight from the fridge to the frying pan. But are they right? And if so, why? And how long should you temper it for anyway? Five minutes, 10 minutes is longer better? And isn't it a bit unsafe? Yes, chefs are right. Unless you're reverse searing or cooking sous vide, and then it doesn't matter. I'll come back to why later. To me, this was a bit counterintuitive. If the steak is already warmed up, isn't it easier for the high heat of a grill or a pan to cause the meat beneath the surface to shoot past medium rare and cause more overcooking? Wouldn't starting with colder meat give you a bigger temperature buffer that allows more time to develop a crust and then lower the heat to finish cooking? Actually, no. If we take an ice cold steak, season it, insert my wireless predictive thermometer that uses its eight temperature sensors to find and track the true core temperature, and set the target temperature to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 50 Celsius, then put it in a reasonably hot pan. Here I'm using my temperature controlled induction burner to hold the pan at a steady 375 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'll let it cook until the core reaches 122 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll flip this tape about halfway through cooking, then I'll rest it so that carryover cooking finishes cooking to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. When I slice this steak open, this is the gradient you'll see. Not terrible, but you can see it's clearly unevenly cooked with a lot of overdone meat near the surface. But if I take the other steak that is warmed to room temperature for several hours and do everything the same, we see that the tempered steak has much more evenly cooked doneness from surface to center. Clearly, tempering the steak does let it cook more evenly. But why? Because the speed at which heat flows into our food is proportional to the difference in temperature between the pan and the steak. While the pan was at the same temperature, a constant 375 degrees Fahrenheit for both of these steaks, there was about a 40 degree Fahrenheit or 22 degrees Celsius difference in the starting temperature between the two steaks. This means that the tempered steak's core temperature was already about 40% of the way to done when I started cooking it. The reason that tempering works is that despite the heat of the pan, heat flows slowly into an already warm steak for a shallow temperature gradient and more uniform doneness. Whereas in an ice cold steak, the heat surges at first, which results in a steep temperature gradient and a more unevenly cooked steak. This is also why reverse searing and sous vide cooking work so well, and why there's no benefit to tempering a steak when you're using either of these techniques. In both of these cases, rather than pre-warming the steak, you're reducing the surrounding cooking temperature to be very close or even the same as the final doneness you want. And this is kind of the big takeaway. The more evenly you want to cook a steak or any cut of meat or seafood for that matter, the slower you need to go, whether that's by taking the time to let the meat temper or by using a slow cooking technique like sous vide or reverse searing. But tempering until the steak is at room temperature takes a long time. It's even slower than sous vide, which is kind of impractical. And from a food safety perspective, things start to get a bit dodgy after about four hours without refrigeration. So 
how long do you actually need to temper your steak to get the benefits? Let's find out. I'm going to temper a couple more steaks for 5 minutes and 15 minutes, and I'll cook them and compare them against the other two steaks that I cooked earlier. The steak that was tempered for 5 minutes is more or less indistinguishable from the steak cooked straight from the refrigerator. Now, this makes sense given that the core and surface temperatures only increased by about 1 degree Fahrenheit, that's half a degree Celsius, during the tempering step. The core of the steak tempered for 15 minutes increased by 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, that's about 2 degrees Celsius, and it's visibly more evenly cooked from surface to center, although it's not as uniform as the steak tempered for hours until the core was at room temperature. Something to keep in mind, tempering in hot professional kitchens will go faster. Now, I don't recommend that you turn up the heat in your kitchen, nor do I suggest that you temper your steak for hours at room temperature. But a very simple thing you can do to quickly temper an ice-cold steak is use some tepid water. Just put your ice-cold steak into a Ziploc bag and submerge it in some lukewarm water for about 10 or 15 minutes. This will temper your steak a lot faster than air so that you can get on with the cooking sooner. But whatever approach you take, tempering is better than no tempering. It's an easy thing to do that will make a meaningful improvement to your meat cooking skills. So remember, pull your steaks, your chops, your chicken, your fish fillets, whatever from the fridge before you start cooking. That's it for today, and thank you so very much for watching.